Little thunder. Stop it. Little lightning. Stop. This episode of Film Learning is brought to you by our Strike Flash Lightning Packs. We have Strike, Strike Fight Night, the Flash Lightning Throw, and our Justice League Flash Lightning Pack. You can download all of these for free at filmlearning.com slash downloads. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learning you some filmmaking and learning you good. Now, ever since I released the very first Strike Pack last year, I've gotten a question again and again and again and again and again and again. How do you make the lightning? And it's something that I wanted to address today. And today we're going to be using the example of the Justice League lightning effect. Because funnily enough, it's the exact same method that I used for making all the CW strike packs beforehand. Now in order to complete your very own custom lightning layers, firstly, you need to head to filmlearning.com slash downloads, download the project file, and you'll also need to head to videocopilot.net and download a copy of Saber. Now remember when I said last week that I didn't have any spark assets for you to download for the Justice League flash effect and the Wonder Woman effect? Well, the boys at Action VFX have come to the party, so in the download pack you'll also find this free spark asset to use in your own custom flash lightning effects, or Wonder Woman effects, or whatever you want to use them for. Pretty sweet, huh? So be sure and check out their channel and their website down in the description below. Now guys, since this involves a lot of frame by frame animation, let's get into it shall we and stop farting around. Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I've got myself a blank project all ready to go. Now, making this lightning can be very involved and take a decent amount of time, especially if you're doing it without a reference point or if the shot is rather long. Now, there is good news. There is a slightly easier way to animate the lightning and it's what I'm going to cover in this particular episode. And that is how I made the Justice League lightning match the trailer's lightning as well as it did. Now, here's the dirty little secret. I traced it. Your mother's a tracer! Yep, you heard me. I used the exact clip and drew each of the strokes of lightning frame by frame to match the lightning on screen as best I could. If you check the link in the description, you can actually download a copy of this shot from Justice League to work with. Now, if you've got the project file, then we both should be looking at the same comps in the project menu right here. One called JL Lightning Base and one called CW Lightning Base. If we open up the JL Lightning Base, you'll see one big fat straight line. But if you look down at their comp itself, you'll see three solid layers. One says large, one says medium, and one says small. If I turn on all of them, you'll see that we have the small one, which is a tiny little line, the medium one, which is a tad thicker, and our large one, which is a bit on the tubby side if we're talking real. Now the reason we have three different sized lightning cores is because in any given frame of a flash lightning animation, be it CW or Justice League, you're going to have different sized lightning layers. If we head over to the effects menu, you'll see that each of these lightning layers do actually have slightly different settings overall. In fact, I encourage you, check out and have a look down each of these parameters for yourself to see how they differ from each other. So. How do we use these? Well, let's get into it, shall we? Firstly, let's drag and drop this Justice League trailer shot over here to create a new comp. Next, let's head to our JL Lightning Base comp. We'll then highlight the medium and the small layer because the flash is quite small in this shot, so we don't need the large layer, and we're just gonna copy these like so. And then we'll just paste them into our Justice League comp. From there, we'll just change the transfer mode on both of those to screen. From there, we wanna copy those, paste them, and then we'll move them along one frame, do the same thing again, copy those frames, paste them, move them along one frame, and just keep doing this until you fill the entire comp to the point where you don't need the lightning anymore. The end result should look a bit like this, like a staircase almost. Essentially what you've done is add a frame of lightning to each frame of the video. And now that we've done that, it's time to draw that lightning in, frame by frame. So we'll head back to the first frame of our Justice League shot and just take a look. As we can see, there's not a lot going on in this frame. It's just one tiny speck of blue right here. So what do we do? Medium or small? Well, since the small one has a very small core and it also has a smaller glow, I think I'm gonna use medium and I'm just gonna simply turn off the small layer like so. From there, we'll zoom in, grab the pen tool and draw the lightning out as best we can over the existing lightning. There we go. From there, we can zoom out and check our work. Not bad, and that's one frame done. We'll then shift forward one frame and do the exact same thing. Observe the lightning in the shot 
and decide which one of the lightning layers needs to be used. Now just remember, you can easily use more than one thickness and you can draw as many pieces of lightning as you like, but this is a frame by frame process. You still have to evaluate each frame individually on its own. Now, the reason we don't just animate, say, the mask path, it's pretty simple, guys. If we scrub through the timeline, this lightning is never in the same place at the same time, or it's never the same shape. Can you imagine how annoying that would be to shift all those points, add more points? I mean, it just boggles my mind just thinking about it. So actually redrawing these things is preferable to animating the mask path. So you can now see I'm at the point where the flash is fully tapped into the speed force and there is lightning all over the place. In this case, we're gonna be utilizing both layers as opposed to the frames where he's just charging up. And if we scrub back through, you can see I've mostly used the medium layers, but now that we've hit this particular layer, we can use the medium and the small. And if we'd like, we can actually add yet another iteration of small Hit MM on the keyboard to collapse the mask menu, and we need to delete all the masks we've drawn on that layer. That way it goes back to its straight line state and we're ready to draw more masks. We can now head into the core distortion settings and maybe just change the distortion on this one to just add a few more artifacts around the scene. And what I mean by that is these little just threads of lightning that I've just got around these parts here. It's just that little bit of detail that can help sell your effect a little bit more. Now if you like, and I do this too, make sure you preview your work constantly, both with the footage you are tracing and turn that footage off and preview it without. Because when you go through this frame by frame process, it can get tedious and having the ability to see what you've actually made in motion actually helps motivate you to finish the job. Because the funny thing is, this is just one lightning animation that I consider to be quite easy. Things like the lightning throw loops, oh, Damn guys, that was a lot more frames than this and it's a lot more detail. So you can see as I'm going through frame by frame that the process never changes. As soon as I'm done with that frame, I move to the next one, starting with just those blank straight lines and then just zoom in and just redraw them. Now, if you ever get to the point where you go, oh, that lightning's a bit thicker than the medium shot that I've got, or it's a little bit smaller than the small one, you can always just go over to the Saber preset in the effects menu and just change the core size. Because once again, the beauty of doing this thing frame by frame with all individual solid layers is that if you change the core size for one frame, you're not gonna affect any of the other frames. So on this frame, we do actually run into a little bit of a problem, and this is where we're going to do a little bit of freehand work rather than actually trace. You can see in the shot, they've got sort of a stairwell thing right here, and when he runs past it, you can see the lightning's actually chopped off. So all we're going to do in that situation is just extend that lightning out the frame, like so. This is just a good example of saying that you don't have to just trace within the lines here. If there's a shot that you're looking at this lightning and you just go, oh, that doesn't look quite right, just feel free to have a play and just draw it however you like. Because at the end of the day, you're not really drawing it to suit this shot, you're drawing it to suit your shot. But if we now check out a preview, I've finished all the frames of the animation and it looks like this. And if we turn off the footage, you can see it looks like this. So guys, that's the process of recreating lightning in its most basic format, tracing from reference. That's tracing. Not really. Now I've also got an example that I've drawn from the CW series on screen right now to show you that the process is the same, the lightning just looks a bit different. As long as you have that reference point in a really good resolution, at least full HD, you can make it happen just by drawing it. Now the process of drawing the lightning freehand is very similar, but you are working from a base of following the actor in your footage, so you don't have anything to trace. It's still the same frame by frame animation, but it is a little bit different. And hey, if you wanna change the color of the CW flash lightning or the Justice League flash lightning, it is super easy. All you have to do is click on the layer, then head over to the effects menu, and within Saber, click on the glow color and change it to whatever color you want. And you'll see your lightning now updates. Now you will have to do this for the large, medium, and small layers, and you're good to go. I'm gonna be releasing a new strike pack dedicated to custom lightning animation in the next few weeks, so do keep an eye out for that. This pack is really built for those that don't wanna do the drawing. You just wanna grab individual elements, put them all together to make your own lightning animation. 
It's really cool and I'm really looking forward to putting that out there. But for now, that was a lot of frame by frame animation. Done. So guys, that's how you create your own custom flash lightning in After Effects. As you can see, there is a fair bit of work involved in actually animating these things frame by frame, but the end result is really, really worth it. Now, hopefully that nips that in the bud and I stop getting requests for this thing because there has been a lot of them. So get out there, create some really cool custom flash lightning and send me your work, I'd love to see it. But for now guys, that is my time. If you did enjoy this video, please smash that like button, I really do appreciate it. And if you are new here, why not hit subscribe or if you are subscribed and you don't have that notification bell turned on, please click that now so you don't miss a single film learning episode. We've got our other flash lightning episodes right over here, and I think I've got another one right here. But my social media crap is also above my head. I post all the time, guys, work in progress stuff, all that sort of good stuff. You can see what's coming up on the show. But until I see you next time, keep learning.